Let's raise up your hands where they are. Father, in the name of the Son, Jesus Christ, I pray. There are seven demonic altars which normally come by the influence of a God called Baal. That's why God said to Gideon, your father has got a bar in the house. There is a spirit of bar. You must take a lamb that must also have a number what? Seven. Because each year represents an altar of bar. Now, now in Numbers 23 verse 1, the Bible says Balaam, he was hired to curse the people of Israel. But Balaam said, if you want me to curse the people of Israel, this is what you must do. Balaam says unto Balak. Balak is the one who hired him to curse Israel. Build me here. How many? Seven altars. And prepare me here. Seven what? Oxen. And seven what? Rams. He mentions of rams. He mentions of oxen. And he mentions of altars. Because a ram or a, a lamb is the one that we kill and we put on the what? On the altar in those days. And Barak realizes that I cannot release a case against the people of Israel without what? An altar. And he says, not one. I need how many? Seven. I'm talking to somebody here. Now, can you imagine that Gideon is born from a family whose father was worshipping a bar, a god of seven altars. And God says you'll be a great man. But God won't start with you. He has to go back into your background and finish what has been a problem in your family. And Gideon says our family is the poorest. The reason why the family was so poor is because there were altars in the house which the father had not dealt with. So you may be in church today and be wondering why your things are not moving the way they are supposed to move. There could be an altar or altars which we must break and dismantle tonight. If you believe that we can break these altars, somebody raise up a hand and say, I break them now. Now, these seven altars, tonight I want to share you all of them, but I'm going to give you three, and tomorrow I'm going to give you the rest. So there are seven altars which Balaam requested they must be built. Now, the people of Israel... They are just moving. This is what we keep on telling you. That you must be very careful. Because the people of Israel, they were moving in the wilderness. And they didn't know they had somebody. Remember, they never saw Balaam. But Balaam was seeing them. As they were walking, going to Israel, Barak the king hired Balaam. And they went on top of the mountain. And he said, do you see them? Those are Israelites. They are going back to Israel. Let's curse them. And he said, no, 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 no. Do you mean what? Seven altars. So I cursed them. The Israelites didn't see them. You must know this, that the people who can actually bring you down, you are not seeing them doing it. There are some secrecy going on around you. There are people who are trying to bring you down. It's not everybody who's happy with you of your success. It's not everybody who is so proud of you if things are moving well. Somebody somewhere is raising up an altar to bring you down. You must be very careful because altars are real. Am I talking to somebody here? How many altars were raised here? Seven altars. He said raise up seven. Seven altars. And Gideon is born from this family. Where eventually, Ba has even gone to Israel. Is even in the house of the father of Gideon. And Gideon is there. And Gideon is wondering why they are poor. And why he is the least. It was not his problem. There was a spirit of Ba in the house. That was supposed to be terminated. If the prophecy of Gideon had to come to pass. Now, the first altar on the seven altars. Hmm, I'm going to give you three. Am I allowed to give you three? Or oh, because of time, should we do tomorrow? The first altar that we'll be looking upon tonight 
is known as the altar of the land. Someone said the altar of the land. Come on, say it again. Say it again. The altar of the land. There is what we call the altar of the land. Listen to me. Listen to me. If there is a thing the enemy will look up so much on you, is land. This is why God would likely say, I will bless you, the land that you shall. Why would God talk about blessing the land? Why would God oftentimes speak of, I will bless the land? The blessing shall be the land you shall put your crops. Why would God? Because God understands they are altars of what? Of land. If you're not careful, your land can be taken away. Let's go to Genesis 26 quickly. So Genesis 26. Genesis 26. Now we read from verse 19 to 22. Can you just read for me? Genesis 26 from verse number 19. And Isaac's servants digged in the valley and found there a well of spring water. And the headmen of Gerah did strive with Isaac's headmen, saying, The water is ours. And he called the name of the well Essek, because they strove with him. And they digged another well and strove for that also. And he called the name of it Stina. And he removed from hence and digged another well. And for that they strove not. And he called the name of it Rehoboth. And he said, for now the Lord has made room for us. And we shall be fruitful in the land. Somebody say, the altar of the land. Of the land. Say it again. The altar of the land. The altar of the land. You must get this in your mind somewhere. The first land that he actually took, they fought him and he left it. He went into another land. They fought him. He left it. He called it Sitna. He left it. And the one that he actually got for the last, Rehoboth, they said we will not fight him. And he said, God has given us room and made us to be fruitful in this land. Come on. I want you to hear this. I'm talking to somebody right here. Yes. Somebody say fruitful. fruitful. Say it again. Fruitful in the land. Fruitful. Do you know that the first thing that Abraham would do if he's given a land was to offer what? A sacrifice. To raise an altar unto the Lord. When we continue reading in the same chapter, we see that even Isaac did the same. He raised an altar unto the Lord. Why? Because a land, the land where you are, or any land that you need, you must understand this. That the enemy knows very sure that you will never get a blessing without land being attached. And some of you, your cases that you have, comes back from your land. Hello? Some of you, the cases you have, they are traced back from the land you're coming from. This is why you need to know that there is a special altar. An altar for the land. And if they case the land of Israel, Israel will become a wanderer without a place to settle. And this was the whole meaning they needed. They wanted to case Israel to become a wanderer. To have no place to stay. No settlement. If the enemy releases this altar against you, you are finished. We have people who are trying to build houses now and they are no longer finishing the houses they are building. Sometimes the place where you are building, you don't know the altar which was raised in that location. There was a certain time I involved somebody into a certain transaction, a certain business. Oh my God, we never closed it. No, and the person was so much hardworking that we never closed it. Until God, on that day, 
when I was at the Goshen seat when I was praying, when he showed me about the man, that's the day God told me, he said, you must be very careful with openings. He said, do you remember that transaction you, were, you wanted? I said, yes, Lord. He said, it failed because the man that was working for you, he was an opening. There are openings in the realms of the spirit that if you are not careful, they can have access to your marriage. They can have access to your money. And altars are part of openings. If you don't deal with altars, evils will have access to you because of those altars. Am I talking to you? Am I speaking to you? So I'm hearing you, prophet. You must be very careful. You must be very careful. You must be very careful. There are people you greet. After that, your life begins to go down. Openings. <laughs> Somebody raise up a hand. I say, I break every opening. I break every opening. Hey, the way you are talking, the way you are talking, you 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 better you better be serious, so. Because I can see a lot of you have got openings. So I break the openings. <laughs> Some of you you have got issues, and you don't know why. It's the land you are coming from. And it's, am, am I talking to you? Am I talking to you? Altars of the land. There are some of you. Your place you're coming from. There were altars that were raised by your kings, by your chiefs in your land. That's where the word deliverance exists. Because we cast out evils. Altars, demonic altars are evil. And we as believers, it is our job to cast them out. Am I talking to you? Am I speaking to you? I was one day in Uganda. I was in Uganda one time. And when we arrived there, they didn't know why. I said, at night when I was praying, God told me, he said, there is a place you have if you want to do the meeting tomorrow. There is a place you must go and deal with. I had that word. God told me the name of the place. He said, there's a place called Ginger. So I said, take me there. So they took me, and they, they were all thinking, I'm going there. Every time I go to Uganda, they will tell you, I will not preach until they take me there. As we are driving, I said, can you stop by that bush? And my Sunday, he drove. And I walked out. I went into the bush. Guess what I saw? Under a tree. An altar. Demonic altar. Where people had put traditional pots. You know these traditional pots. All around, around the tree. And you could see dead chickens. That they actually, some died a long time ago. Some You just see around that place. I said, I, I got it. I, I went back into the car. I said, this is serious. We now, we now drove to Ginger. Ginger is a source of Nile River. I said, take me. I said, I want to jump into, into the boat. I want to take me where, I want to see where the Nile River starts. So I said, well, take him on the boat. I said, move along along the, the river. All I was seeing along the river were altars, demonic altars, people putting pots and crazy stuff all around. And, and I was just behaving like I'm not seeing nothing. But I was not with them. Spiritually, I was in a dimension of warfare. I knew it is so difficult prophetically the land of Uganda to be redeemed if these altars are not dealt with. And intercessors are men of God and women of God in Uganda. They have so much work to do because prophetically, whether you like it or not, God has raised up a pulpit. The pulpit of God is in Uganda. You didn't hear me. But they will never get it. And it will trust you me. Until these altars 
are broken. As much as it is, Uganda was supposed to be a headquarters of the glory of God. But the altars of the land. The land is polluted. And his intercessors, men of God, women of God, to pray and fight. But they will never. Because the enemy has gone and, 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 and took over a lot of men of God and made them to start fighting each other. So now it's the battle of the church. So I'm like, so I'm moving there. And, and they, are they are moving me. And I'm like, oh, this is crazy. I could sense warfare. Altars of the land. You must know the altars of the land. This is where principalities and spirits operate from. They say, who do you think you are? What do you think you can do? I'm talking to you. If, if I go now to any city and you find a demon-possessed person, do you know what that person will say? Do you know what the demon will say? What do you want in our land? Do you know when Jesus was casting out a demon, a region, the, the demon said, do not cast us out from this land. These were altars of the land, demons of the land. You must be very careful because some of you here, you are being affected by demons of the land. You don't know. And just moving. But there could be a connection from the land. And spirits monitor you from that level. But we have the power and the blood of Jesus. As God predicted through Gideon. It's only the lamb that can break and destroy all demonic altars. Somebody said by the blood of the lamb. I command every demonic altar to be broken out. 